one on one battle, Kawhi Leonard or PJ Tucker. Who you? Who you <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going. I'm going Kawhi. I'm going L K L right there. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> Oh man! I don't, I don't know. I mean, unless you let PJ Tucker just catching, shooting three, like the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, all right, hey, look, you stand right here, Leonard. We gonna pass it, and do you close out? <laughs> and we need you announcing that one on one matchup. Just, just commentate it, Gil. That would be. I think I'd pay a million dollars to see that. That's what I would pay a million dollars. In the middle of it, he'd start watching highlights of himself. On so, his yeah, exactly. That's it. You know what? This is how you would play one on one. Look at me. <laughs> exactly. Look at me right here. This is some trash. Look at me right here. This is nice, right? <laughs> Welcome back to Out of Bounds. I'm Pierce Simpson. On today's episode, we're going to recap last night's game with the Cleveland Cavaliers even up the series against the Boston Celtics. And of course, we look ahead to tonight's matchup between the Golden State Warriors and the Houston Rockets as things continue in the Bay Area. But first things first, I'm joined here by Complex Sports Editor, Mr. Adam Caporello. Capo, we, how are we feeling today? Good. Feeling good. Hit on the uh, Cavs first quarter and Cavs first half. So. You had a revelation right before we started shooting that you made your first bet on hockey. It, that's where we're at. I was advised. To take the <laughs> Bay, I was. I was advised last week to take the Tampa Bay Lightning in Game Three of the Eastern Conference Finals. Have you ever played hockey a day in your life? I played roller hockey. Okay, Gil. You know, every week that we do the show, I feel like what okay, fuck is roller hockey? <laughs> no clue. But it's like okay, cap intervention levels. I think him betting on hockey is at an all time high. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. So, it came from a good source. It came from a good <laughs> source. Wow. Hey, okay, we're gonna catch. Uh, we're going to catch him in the summer betting on dog fighting in the back of an alley. <laughs> in Mexico on chicken, I guess. Summer's for baseball and horse racing. Okay, okay. he's going to be okay. sleeping in the studio. But ne- <laughs> next next to Adam Caporell is Mr. Gilbert Arenas. Gil, we had, a, we had a fun time in the green room watching your old highlights where you cooked up Steve Nash. Hey, yo. Hey, Cook- hey, hey. <laughs> I was cooking. I didn't realize how much I was getting cooked either. <laughs> yeah, he gave you 45, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's up with that? So you scored 42 but gave up 45. That's a negative. Oh, 42? No, no, no. I scored 54. Oh, 54. Okay, okay. <laughs> you better, you better Maybe. Google. <laughs> you better, you better Google me, Google. <laughs> so, 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 I scored 54. But gave up 45. The best thing about the 54, because you know I said I was going to score 50 against them. Mm-hmm. And be, but why? Were you good? Because they, 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 they snubbed me in, in the Olympic team. Oh, Dan Tony was Dan okay. Okay. So during, during warm-up lines, he calls me over and says, because they're on a 16-game winning streak. You're going to have to score more than 50 to beat my team. I'm planning on it. <laughs> and I scored 54 and we won. <laughs> Cap, I, I was a killer. I hope I have as Wait, much hold joy. on. <laughs> Look, he's, I hope I have as much joy in life as he Ooh. had watching his old highlights. Because I never watched him. <laughs> I, did, I, was, I never watched him. You also didn't watch the fourth quarter. You watched your own highlights. He watched his own highlights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't watch the fourth quarter last night. You watched your own highlights. Because my fourth quarter highlights is better than that fourth quarter. Uh, true, actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. Yeah. Listen, Gilbert Arenas has a fair point. He's been pretty much right this entire playoff series. Like he predicted, the Cleveland Cavaliers would even up the series against the Boston Celtics in an impressive win last night, 111-102. In game four, as things head back to Boston for game five, LeBron James finished with 44 points, 17-28 shooting. And it was also a huge milestone for LeBron James because he passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's record of playoff field goals made. He now owns a record with 2,368 field goals made, which, again, is impressive, and Kareem's number is impressive as well. Tristan Thompson contributed with 13 to 12. Kyle Corver chipped in with 14 points, and George Hill with 13. The Boston Celtics starters all had double figures, and the Cleveland Cavaliers had 18 turnovers, seven for LeBron James, but they still lost. Gil, you predicted correctly, as I mentioned before, that LeBron and the Cavaliers would take care of their home court. What did you see in Game Four that gives you hope that they can win the series? Hope. Let's call LeBron. <laughs> Man, LeBron. <laughs> that's, that's the biggest. But this, you know, this is this is a bad, bad sign for Boston, mm-hmm. to me, because, you know, you you were up two zero, and to you young guys, you think that's actually the series is over with. Yeah. You know, um, you go down there and get spanked both games. Like this game wasn't a close game. The fact that you you actually played well, you had five guys in the double digits. Yeah, you know when you guys score like that, you guys are unstoppable. So the fact that you only had nine turnovers, you played well, controlled the game, yeah. but still was beat on, you know, by LeBron and the Cavs. I mean, it it just says the, that you're gonna have a hard time in game. Five. Do you think it's it's the fact that they are missing two of their best players in Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward? Yeah. Like they lack that superstar. See, they 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 lack that closer. So a guy who Cause what you who they it? can go to at the end of the game that's gonna give them a guaranteed bucket. That's gonna, you know, 
that's going to create baskets out of out of zero. So when you say Kyrie, that's what Kyrie was good for last year. That's what IT was great, great for. You know, in the last four or five minutes when the game is on the line, put the ball in that guy's hands and he can make stuff happen. Without that guy on the floor, you're giving it to Tatum, which is he's going to be a super stud in this league. But right now, you know, at 19, 20 years old, you can't de- you you can't depend you, on you can't right depend on yeah. him to make great plays all the time. He's going to have rookie relapses. Yeah. You know, even though he's a solid player right now as a, a rookie, yeah. you don't want that responsibility right now to give that man the ball, to have him try to compete with LeBron James. Especially when you're going, to, like you said, going up against LeBron James, who's obviously on a mission right now. Cap, the Cavaliers jumped out to a 34-18 lead in the first quarter. The Celtics kind of narrowed things. What do you think was the issue for the Celtics in the first half? They shot like garbage again. They were terrible in the first quarter. I mean, basically got doubled up in the first quarter. Yeah. And the defense for the Cavaliers was phenomenal in the first quarter. I mean, Kyle Corr almost had three blocks in the first quarter. Yeah. That's like the apocalypse about to happen when, that, <laughs> when, when you see that. So it's like you saw the intense Cleveland defense again to start things off, to set the tone big time. LeBron obviously got his points and got everyone in the mix. Guys hit some threes. JR was going off a little bit early on. Yeah. So it's, again, great start at home for the Cavs. But I wonder if they can actually do that in Boston because we haven't seen that in the first two games of the series. The the bad part about this is in four games, LeBron has scored 40. In the Eastern Conference Finals, you know, you you have one guy who's – that you have to stop, just one guy. You don't have to stop everyone. You just have to stop one guy, and this guy is still scoring 40. Yeah, I believe 42 points in game two. And that's why I said it's like if he's going to score 40 anytime he wants, you, you have no chance in the series. That, that, yeah, that's a fair <laughs> you have point. no chance that, you know, at will he's going to give you 40. Not 32, mm-hmm. not the, 40. And, and it's like you mentioned <laughs> with Boston Celtics being a young team. They've only won one road playoff game this entire postseason, and that was in Philadelphia where they dominated the Philadelphia 76ers. But it just, the same thing repeats itself. They were up two games to none against Milwaukee. They were up two games to none against Cleveland. And now the series is tied heading back to Boston with a guy like you mentioned, LeBron James, who smells blood. And also, let's mention the fact that if the Cavs actually took care of the ball in the second half, this probably would have been a 20 or 20 oh, easy. game. I mean, they would, have been, they would have completely annihilated him. The fact that it was only a, you know, a, the 111-102 final score yeah. is not really indicative of what the game actually was for the most part. Every, every game so far in, in both Western Conference Finals and the Eastern Conference Finals has been a blowout. Uh, are we concerned at all about the level of basketball being played? No, we should just mention that this, the playoffs have been trash. Wow. Go no, they have, though. I mean, other, yeah. than, other than basically the Indiana and uh, you know, Cle- uh, Cleveland series yeah. in the first round, have we really had a truly dramatic, elongated series? No. I mean, you can maybe point to a few games in the Boston and Milwaukee series in the first round, yeah. you know, some late buzzer beers and stuff like that. But in the grand scheme of things, have we had a really dramatic, really well-played series both. other than maybe Pacers, uh, Cavs? Both I don't think game, so. Yeah, both, both seven-game series happened in the first round, Milwaukee yeah. and Boston and Indiana and Cleveland. So... I mean, considering how the Eastern Conference teams are playing and the way the West looks, it might not be the same in NBA Finals whenever those uh, the Finals it's, teams It's been up. really disappointing. Like, it's, it's, been, it's been bad. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> when Cleveland goes down and win game five. Oh, so you're, that pre- already. you're predicting it. <laughs> when they go down and win the game five and then come back home, win game six. Who do you do? do is Brad Stevens a great coach? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is because look how far he's gotten this team that's basically relying on but this, two really young team, players and team, Al Horford to but, get to but the this team Thomas Finals and put we Ron to, and company in the 2 0 hole. Yes. But we have to stop acting like this team doesn't have talent. They have a lot but of talent. They do, right but they now. have a lot of young talent. But who, let's, let's be honest here. Who did they actually beat that was a threat anyway to them? Milwaukee? With no uh, no outside shooting can I stop, whatsoever. Can I stop you right now. Sure. Did we not all predict the Sixers were going to beat the Celtics? Yeah, because in we five thought games? we, but okay. we thought the Sixers was good because of regular season. But when you looked at them, they a young team that was so inexperienced that didn't have no shooters. Yeah. Their star player decided this series he's what he was not going to shoot the ball for some reason. So what was their real challenge? <laughs> LeBron James this round. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like when you look at their their, their road, it was. Yeah, I mean, this playoffs has really shown <laughs> us how how well the Western Conference has always been put yeah. together, how much of a juggernaut they are compared to the Eastern Conference. It's obviously Varsity and JV, yeah. even though you have LeBron James on the East. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that, it's that one star playing at a Catholic school, and it's like, 
Woo, okay. Yeah, like, right. oh, you're killing, you're killing. Like, <laughs> you're killing, guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, you putting up 50. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, speaking of Catholic schools, uh, LeBron's not done playing anytime soon, but he might be getting a statue at his old school, his old Catholic high school, in the near future. We're going to debate that in fair or foul. <laughs> All right, so is LeBron actually worthy of getting a statue while he's still playing? Because real talk, this never happens. But Aaron Carey, a fellow alumnus of St. Vincent and St. Mary's, the same high school that LeBron attended, um, wants to try and raise $1 million on GoFundMe to commission a life-size statue of the still active superstar who obviously hails from Akron, Ohio. It's supposed to be designed from LeBron playing his high school days when he's bowling out with St. Vincent and St. Mary's. Um, and he'd be wearing his number 23 high school jersey and basically looking to dunk the ball. And I think maybe wearing his his first iteration of Nikes, but that's kind of, you know, a little... Yeah, the LeBron, uh, one. yeah, LeBron ones. Yeah, it's still nice. kind of up for debate what they're going to do with the shoes, right. but um, that's kind of the idea right now. And according to the Akron Beacon Journal, if Kerry raises $1 million, the statue could wind up outside St. Vincent, St. Mary's, or LeBron's I Promise School. So, guys, uh, you know, LeBron was asked about this in the shoot-around before Game 3. He said, he said, quote, First of all, thank you. It would be cool not only for myself, but for my family and all the people that had anything to do with this journey thus far. I'm appreciative even of the thought. So fair or foul, LeBron potentially getting a statue if a million dollars is raised and erected while he's still playing the game. Uh, one, completely fair because LeBron's arguably one of the greatest players of all time. You can make the case that he's in a conversation with Jordan, so obviously the statue's fine. Uh, the part I call foul is this some random dude Asking for a GoFundMe for a million dollars? I mean, Ain't no te- statue being built, bro. Technically, <laughs> technically yes, so technically also no. I mean, Kerry, I believe, played ball at St. Vincent St. Mary's, but six years after LeBron played, so he has ties. He's six a, years after. Six years after LeBron listen, graduated. I, 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 Go fund me, huh? Yeah, yeah. Go fund me? Hey, Go hey, hey Kerry, it's going to be a says, statue outside of but, the but but It is Kerry and LeBron. But he has contacted. <laughs> Kerry, go get that money, go to Vegas. But he says he has con- <laughs> <laughs> He says he's contacted the artist that designed the statue of Shaq that's outside the Staples Center, so yeah. he has some bona fides, apparently, at least of, of putting out the proper protocols of getting something erected. <laughs> that so, statue's going to be yes. MGM Grand. <laughs> <laughs> but What's up? If you want to donate any money to potential LeBron statue it's out there for you but um lebron deserves three statues oh he's gonna have three one outside of quicken loans arena one outside of american airlines arena in miami and then one outside of his high school but again to my question fair you don't think he deserves one in miami he might have four (laughs) well what's the what's the fourth one outside his his uh compound (laughs) oh outside of his house he can afford plenty of statues yeah he definitely can Without question. I'll, I'll say fair. I mean, he's great. I mean, he, already right now, if he retires and, and hangs it up, he's going to be on our NBA Mount Rushmore. There's no doubt about that. So I say completely fair that LeBron deserves a statue while he's still playing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, without question. question. I mean, hey, yeah. Don't even, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking no, like. No, don't even question it. No, I'm not. I'm just thinking he can get four statues. And Look, he, there's going to be a lot of LeBron statues around. Oh, it's going to be everywhere. <laughs> it's going to be everywhere. Uh, you ready for one more hypothetical, though? I'm ready. Would a statue of that would celebrate LeBron in his hometown or in his home area of Akron or Cleveland, would that in any way, shape, or form entice him to stay? <laughs> like, stay, like, 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 resign? <laughs> hey, this <laughs> you? <laughs> Hey, this nice magic. I'm on the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he's gonna get a statue no matter no matter what. Yeah. Hey, entice him to stay a statue? <laughs> I mean, Jordan had his statue in 1994. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he had during the playing days and enticed him to come back to the Bulls. I guess. I mean, kind of. <laughs> Is there any player that y'all wish could have a statue that maybe doesn't have a statue right now? Yes. John Starks dunking over the Bulls. Hand wave. Outside MSG. <laughs> Make it happen, James Dolan. Give Do me something the, good for once. That's what we're going You we're, said who, John? I want, this, I want the statue of the dunk, so, a.k.a. John Starks dunking over half the Bulls team. In a series that y'all lost. So what? But, wow. Like Wait, the Knicks moment. have fallen on hard as, times. As great as that is, <laughs> the most famous Nick is Spike Lee. What? Oh, wow. Wow. That is, that is so inaccurate. <laughs> that is? The most famous Nick? Spike Lee has never played. I know. <laughs> I know, but but if, but if you let the public if you let the public vote top five Knicks of all time and you throw Spike Lee's Ooh. name in the category, I guarantee you at least fifteen percent says Spike Lee. Damn, that just cause well, that proves that the American public are a bunch of fucking idiots. <laughs> he deserves a statue. You can fight him at any time that you no, want. But, come on, you know that if no he, idiots would vote for Spike Lee. Yes, wow, would. yeah, they would actually. Okay, Gil, you have anybody? Yourself outside of whoa outside of Verizon Center. What? Look, his wheels spinning. I know you. Your wheels are Does spinning. Does Kobe have a statue yet? No, he'll get one. It's oh, yeah. coming. Yeah. It's coming. I mean, he has two two numbers retired. Let's get, let's get the Kobe jersey already. 
It's okay. Have the right over, like, they need to put his shit on the roof right above Shaq. He's got two hanging up in the rap. No, I mean, right above Shaq, the statue, just looking down. <laughs> just <laughs> one of these. That would be accurate. <laughs> if KD gets a second title in Golden State, could he potentially get a statue outside the arena? Oh. The new Chase Arena in San Francisco? No? Well, we'll see how they continue to play against the Houston Rockets because tonight's Game 4 will go down in, in uh, Oakland. The Golden State Warriors up two games to one against the Houston Rockets. The Warriors thrashed the Houston Rockets 126-85 in Game 3 on Sunday night after struggling during the first two games of the series where people were asking if Steph Curry's healthy, what's going on. He erupted for 35 points, 13 for 23 shooting, and was pretty uh, explicit in letting the world know that this is his fucking house. He went 5 from 12 from, 12 from the three-point line, 18 points alone in the third quarter. KD chipped in with 25 points. Maybe that can you know, help him get a statue at some point in time if the Golden State Warriors win another title. Draymond had 10 and 17. James Harden, only 20 points. We dished out nine assists. With everything going on, including Andre Iguodala being doubtful for tonight's game with knee soreness, do you think Stephen Curry's Game 3 performance will kind of shift the tide and we'll see the same Steph Curry in Game 4 tonight? The same Steph Curry has always been there. I mean, you, you got to we're, we're, we're thinking about the back-to-back MVP Curry without Durant. You know, this is Durant's second year there. Yeah. It's his team when it comes to the scoring load. So, you know, Curry actually has to take a back seat to – you know, to Durant, but, you know, Curry's always been there. You know, when Curry catches fire, we know he's in the building. But, yeah. you know, for us, Curry hits three threes in a row. To us, he had 20. He had right. 30. So when when you don't see the threes go down, we think Curry's having a bad game. But, you know, he shot 53%, shot 38%, yeah. and he's making all his layups and getting to the basket. They're just taking away the three. And Yeah, and the Golden State Warriors also took care of the ball. They only had eight turnovers compared to the Houston Rockets, 19 turnovers cap. Uh, a guy like P.J. Tucker went off in Game 2 in Houston. He helped even up the series, 20-plus points. But in Game 3, he only followed up with six points. Don't start laughing, Gilbert Arenas. What do you think Houston has to do tonight in Game 4 to hopefully even up the series as things head back to Houston? Uh, where would you like me to begin? <laughs> um, uh, I guess we'll start with, yes, the supporting cast. P.J. Tucker's, your Trevor Reese's, your Eric Gordon's, uh, they were horrendous in yeah. Game 3. So obviously you have to show up and put some sort of, for, some sort of effort, um, unlike what we saw in Game 3. They have to score. They have to hit some baskets. Gordon was a particularly atrocious in Game 3. Yeah. So it's like you need, they desperately need help from the role players. And also... Turnovers. Turnovers have killed the Rockets every time they've, they've stumbled yeah. in this series so far. Have to take care of the ball. And you obviously talk all the time about Harden and Paul have to rack up the assists. They have to distribute the ball. They can't be just pounding the ball into the ground yeah. and launching up shots, mostly shitty ones. Yeah. Otherwise, the Rockets have absolutely no chance. And also, Dan Tony made an interesting comment saying before the game that they need to play their A game yeah. to beat the Warriors. Their A game They're on A the game. road against the Warriors, who have won an NBA record 16 straight playoff games. Yeah, their A game. They but the A, but that's what I'm saying. The A, their A game is Harden scoring 40, uh, Paul, uh, Chris Paul scoring 25, P.J. Tucker getting 15, this person getting 15. And you know, that's their A game. That's not going to happen. But, exactly. But like you mentioned with James Harden and Chris Paul not getting the amount of assists in game three collectively, they only had 13 assists. Okay, so I mean, you, that's what I said. You have a problem. You remember when – P.J. Tucker and them went off, yeah. James Harden only had 25. Right. You know, so it's one of those decisions. Does he use his skill to score, cut everybody else out, mm-hmm. or use his skill level to pass the ball? Yeah. And but, that's where James Harden is because this offense is designed just for him to score one-on-one, and there's no movement where – if, if someone doubles me, you pop out, you get this open shot. It's basically me just dribbling at you, and then if you help, I pass it to you. But if I decide to never pass it this way, yeah. these guys are going to sit in the corner and never get the ball. Right. So he has to play decoy to get these guys involved. And me, at this point, I'm, I had 18 turnovers. If, if I have 18 turnovers, that means I'm passing it recklessly. Yeah. Put the ball in you know, Chris Paul's hands because Chris Paul does not turn the ball over. You know, he controls the ball. That's what he does. And if you're going to beat them, you can't turn the ball over. So if if I'm them and you want to play an A game, slow the ball down, put the ball in Chris Paul's hands, especially in the fourth, yeah. and let him dictate the pace, let him dictate the – 
the the shot selection because you know when James gets in there and he's flopping all around trying to flop that's where those easy turnovers come he flopping gets caught he tries to throw it somewhere he can't do that against uh it's it's really ironic that Mike D'Antoni his mo throughout his whole coaching career is don't isolate that's how he got into it with Kobe Bryant that's how he got into it with with Carmelo Anthony don't isolate and of course when he's with James Harden it's like hey (laughs) isolate all day hey 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 your ass got fired two times. <laughs> you going to get those ISO, ISO players. You ain't going to do a uh, third. <laughs> but uh, you mentioned Mike D'Antoni having those interesting comments prior to the game saying that they need to play their A game. He followed things up by saying that the Houston Rockets played soft after game three. But he also had some interesting comments that he gave Tim Bonteps of the Washington Post about how the pressure is on Golden State. And this is the exact quote he had. To me, Golden State has all the pressure. They have to come in here and win tomorrow night. The reason I'm laughing is, I mean, I don't know if that's pressure. That's they play the hockey at this <laughs> wait, point. Wait, because wait. Houston's a one seed. Yeah, that. Wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you want you want to read that again? Uh, to me, Golden State has all the pressure. They have to come in here and win tomorrow night. So what? come in here where he's at. Yeah, where he's at. <laughs> that's their home. So. Dan Tony, from a media perspective, is great because he'll answer just about any question. And he's yeah. he's cool to talk to. And post game, you know, pressers. Yeah. He, he's great. But that quote is delusional. Um, that's that's <laughs> just that's coach hope, speak. Hopefully, and it was just, a lot of sarcasm. I hope. Yeah, I mean, I mean, real talk. If you put him like you gave him true serum, yeah. you wouldn't even say anything close to that. Not at all. Um, because the pressure is entirely on the Rockets. Again, the idea of them winning in Golden State yeah. is completely far fetched. And again, you lost control of the series when you guys lost game one. Game one. Yeah. yeah I mean, it is. I mean, <sighs> technically, there's no pressure. I mean, I see where he's trying to go, but at the end of the day. Yeah, they are the back-to-back champ. I mean, they are the champs. But you dominated so much this year so much. that people forgot about Golden State in a sense. Yeah. Like, they, they think you're the team to take them out. So the fact that you get barbecued game one and you lose home court advantage, now you're in Golden State and you just lost by 41, yeah, there's no pressure on it, them. It just, Even if you win, you just flip it right back to you. <laughs> it, it really just oh, shows your home court advantage. That's what I said. There's no, they're free rolling right now. No, it shows you how much of these teams, especially in the NBA, kind of see ghosts when it comes to juggernaut teams or great players, right? We saw Toronto rip through the regular season. It was like, we want the one seed. We feel like we're ready. Hey, they went up against LeBron, <laughs> got swept. Houston, run through the regular season. We're the team to beat. Nobody's thinking about Golden State. And now they're in this predicament right now. So, predictions for game four tonight. What are we going with, Gil? Mm, you're nervous. No, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how big, the, the, <laughs> how big. You said Eagle Dollars out, right? Knee soreness. Got a knee contusion. Ooh, that means they have to play Nick Young and Cook. So that means there's a, there's an actual another shooter out there. Yeah. Ooh. A lot of space. A lot of space for it, a potential it, Steph and KD pick and roll. Two, eight to 17. Golden State by eight. I know that's yeah. a fucking big-ass march. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very wide march. But it's either, it's, either, it's either eight because... They hit some shots at the end. Look, it's going to be 17, but why? <laughs> at the last two minutes, you know how the, you know, the subs come in, they start hitting shots, and they get down. But why such weird numbers? Eight and 17. That's the I, first. Well, interesting, you bring up eight since the line is eight and a half. Oh, wow. So that kind of makes it a little dicey. You, I kind of want to go Warriors like right it. here and agree with you. They just kind of blow the doors off, but eight and a half is a lot of points, and yeah. Rockets are desperate, and I can't foresee the supporting cast being that bad again. Right. I, I can. Oh, you can? <laughs> yes. Because the, 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 the supporting cast. Has to get the ball. It's not a supporting Even cast. Even without Iguodala, if Iguodala's out of the equation. But look, you're talking about a supporting cast. You're talking about a supporting cast that only relies on waiting in the corner for someone to pass me the ball. Yeah. That's what I said. This is not like P.J. Tucker running off down screens where we overhelp and someone goes back door and they're creating offense. You're talking about a guy who's going to sit in the left corner or the right corner just waiting for the opportunity to get the ball because someone kicked it to him. You can actually go a whole game without actually touching the ball offensively with that style. You're, you're just sitting in the corner waiting for somebody to come. So when P.J. Tucker scores one, 26, it, all, it, ain't has, it has nothing to do with him. He's either he's going to shoot the, the yeah. three shots he get and make them, and he has a good game, or he's going to go one for two, and we'll be like, oh, look, look at shitty-ass yeah. player. I mean, I, listen, some of the things that you said in the previous series that Houston was facing with the Utah Jazz is kind of showing now. James Harden is not getting back on defense. He goes to the rack. It gets poked out. He's not getting back on defense. And also, he's trying to go ISO on two of the best defenders in the league, Draymond and Klay Thompson. So I predict another You know what was a big out. thing, last? What was big? What they were doing to Golden State, switch and roll, 
We're going to play against Steph. Were you attacking Steph? Golden State said, all right, you want to do that? We're going to attack James. Pick and roll, James. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to barbecue you. Fire with fire. You know, it's... Yeah. Listen, I mean, they have more fire to fight. Oh, they, <laughs> they, they do, yeah. and they're trying to run them off the court because, yeah. I mean, David West didn't even play last game, so it's obvious they're keeping the dogs and the guards out there. <laughs> yeah, to yeah. Ball. David West couldn't even get in during garbage time. No, he couldn't. <laughs> but your boy Nick Young <laughs> was out there cooking. Okay. Yeah. Yo, 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 I can tell you this right now. If we up 41, don't put me in. Sorry. If we up 21 and there's five minutes left in the game, I'm subbing myself in. Oh, really? All right. Hey, hey, hey. Don't forget about us over here. Right. <laughs> we practice hard, too. All right, coach, let, it, let, let me. 41, you're putting your foot down. 41, like, and I don't get off the bench in 40. I don't give a shit if you buzz me in for 20 <laughs> seconds, bro. Hey, that's real. If it's my ball, yeah. I'm going to shoot a shot, and I might fuck around and, oops, I fouled. <laughs> to get another shot. <laughs> All right? To extend the game. Yeah, no, just to get another shot. So I got two shots in the 20 seconds. See, that's, when you're on the bench, that's what we think about. That's what we think about right there. Like, yeah, there's 20 seconds. I'm not going to be out there like, oh, yeah. Run the okay. clock out. <laughs> no, bro. You launch it. <laughs> no, bro. I'm shooting this shot. Fuck what y'all talking Get about. Get those shots off. <laughs> <laughs> so lead documents reportedly show that several NFL teams think that Kaepernick is not only good enough to play quarterback in the league, but actually still be a starter. So Kaepernick, we know, filed that collusion lawsuit against the NFL, claiming that teams collectively agreed to keep him out of the league and obviously prevent him from doing what he does best because of his political activism. And it now appears that the argument may be a straight-up lie because Pro Football Talk kind of bro- uh, brought this up. And Mike Florio wrote, quote, Per a source with knowledge of the situation, internal franchise documents generated as part of the free agency evaluation process and testimony from witnesses harvested via Depositions and the collusion litigation has established that teams view Kaepernick as being good enough not simply to be employed by an NFL team, but be a starting quarterback for an NFL team. So, guys, do these documents increase the likelihood that Kaepernick is going to win his collusion case against the NFL? No. Why? I've said it from day one. Collusion, legally, in the legal terms, all 32 teams have to basically agree to keep him out of the NFL. All 32 teams. So if four teams sit up here, or three teams sit up here like us and say, I don't think he's good for the league. What do, what do you guys think? Right. That's just opinions. Yeah. You can't sue there's opinions, but all 32. You're not going to have documents that says all 32 teams can knock, not let him in. So all it takes is one owner – out of the 32, to say, eh, I'll give him a try. Whole collusion case is gone. Um, I mean, I, Gilbert's point, he makes it from a, from a legality standpoint, legally, is like, yeah, it's pretty black and white. You have to get a large group to, to, com- to convince. Not large, but, all. All, collusion. <laughs> but uh, it's big because when you have the deposition, and some of the, some of the people that were deposed in this whole collusion case, I believe Bob Wayne there owned the Houston Texans, Pete Carroll recently, head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, and John Snyder, who's the GM of the Seattle Seahawks. And mind you, the Seahawks had him in for a tryout, and then once they asked him, according to reports, if he was going to kneel for the national anthem, he said he would. All of a sudden, that scheduled tryout was wiped away. So if the Seattle Seahawks view him as a starting quarterback, and all these other teams do, <laughs> and, you're not ha- and you're not letting him in the league, but, th- I have an issue. He's obviously, there's something more to it. But look at the, look at the team he goes to, wh- who has a starting quarterback that you're not going to play in front of. Like, hey, Brandon, we didn't sign a deal this offseason. Do you know who that is? Jo- it, it, was it, is it uh, not Josh Jackson? I might be Josh but, Johnson. <clears throat> kinda, but okay, put it like this. If you know you can possibly get sued for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of million. You would try to have settled this a long time ago. The fact that they haven't even budged means, trust me, they have no chance on losing this. Because the evidence that they need to win this case, like all this evidence right here just shows but you know the NFL, nothing. But you know it's just the NFL, an agent grabbing all this information, trying to bluff. But you know what the NFL hates more than $100 million in the NFL is just a drop in a bucket. Yeah. They hate bad PR. And they have not budged yet. They will soon, I think. All right, they so won't budge. Like, there's no point. There's what am I giving you a hundred million for? Like, I'd rather give you a job than give you a, a, a than a lawsuit. Well, that's my thing. I'll sign you for it. But there's, a, a, there's I'll sign you then. then but Gil, I think that's our thing. There's plenty of teams in the NFL that need a they quarterback. Don't want him in the league. He needs to be in the league, and that's the, that's the issue that he's not in the league. I I, I asked him, did he? I, I'm going to try him out. He said he's he's in a nil. Well, that's that's his decision. That's not, that has nothing to do with us. He can be in this league. He can be in this league all he wants, but he's deciding. So, not- Gil, but the fact that the fact that he's are, he's trying to shed light on all the injustices. That sounds amazing. But I gave him my option, and I said, "Hey, 
But that's whack. You can try out for this team. It's lame, though. I mean, that's yes, yes but, they, gave, they gave him an option. So that's what I'm saying. That's so very lame lo- on their But part. that's what I'm saying. Legally, he loses the case right there also. Yeah, I mean, so 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 our audience. Because he can just lie and say, hey, I won't kneel. And get the get the tryout. Right. So, but so the fact that he said, no, nah, I, I'm, I'm going to keep kneeling. Then, then it's his decision. But, Gil, from your, you're just speaking from, like, a legality standpoint. I'm talking legally. Okay, you're just legally, talking legally. Because that's all so this matters. Because at the end of the day, there. if I'm him, I'm burning money fighting a fight that I can't win. Yeah, just so nobody. Because legally, I'm spending one, two, three million, four million dollars to do what? To but prove it, what point? But is it worth it to embarrass the NFL? No. The goal broke the, the, the embarrass the NFL. Who are you embarrassing individually? You're just, embar- you're just embarrassing <laughs> a collective. Yeah. I mean, five years. You can, but you also put some owners on blast, two too. Year, yeah. Two years from now, nobody's going to even remember it. Oh, they're definitely right. No, I they'll remember this. I think right. it's a water. So, there'll be, there be another dickhead that does something different that everyone's paying I'm sure to. there probably will be. But, all right. And so, in light, of, in light of the fact that you think the collusion case has no, you know, chance of winning whatsoever, I guess the next question I have to ask is, has this case kind of revealed anything about the priorities of NFL teams? Hmm. Yeah, but we've always known that, right? It's like the NFL is the masters of trying to control the narrative and control what they present to the public and what what power they have over certain players. If a player has a DUI or a drug suspension, hey, I have a bit more power over him, so he's welcome back with open arms to our team. A guy like Colin Kaepernick, who's very vocal and and speaks on the injustices that's going on, NFL teams don't like that because they can't control that narrative. So I think yeah, because the so, narrative has nothing to do with them. But that's why you got to let that let him be him. But that's, that's not affecting the product. That's the, the difference. That, that's the difference as a as an owner. You know, someone gets a DUI in this. I that's happening on my watch. That player has done something. What Kaepernick do, what Kaepernick has done has nothing to do with the NFL. But they're taking the backlash for it. See, that's the problem. But again, you know what that. But it's a lot. But honestly, though, the owners can have the power over a guy that may be on. But, his but last that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, you're the last leg. You you did something. That reflects on me. I know how to deal with that. You're doing something that has nothing to do with me, but I'm taking the backlash for it. See, that's the problem. That's the problem here. Like as a business owner, if I'm a business owner and let's say my employees are Hispanic and they decide to start marching outside and don't want to come to work. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And they're like, oh, Trump wants to build a wall. And now I have no business coming in because you're boycotting outside of my business. Like, I don't have nothing to I don't have nothing to do with this wall. Why you guys don't come to work? And that's how this is. It's like the owners took the black eye and this has nothing to do with the owners. They have nothing to do with this narrative. So that's why it's harder for them to swallow because it's like, well, the guy we're we're leaving out, his whole fight has to do with some outside entity, but it's putting a black eye on us. And that's the problem here. The black guy is on, the black guy is on the NFL, but the problem is with the police well, department. It has nothing to do. Well, with here's it. the thing, though: is like we shouldn't even look at it as a black eye. It's not a black eye. We in the NFL, like in the NFL. But that's the issue. It's yes. like it's not a black eye. These owners should not look at it like a black eye. If these players want to peacefully protest and but see that's a, but, but that's the thing. But it's not it's not affecting the the but see the that's the it, field. It, it did aff- it didn't affect the product of the field. It affected you know once Trump got in, it affected the narrative. So you're talking about. As an owner, I'm sitting there. I got two outside entities that has nothing to do. With the, I'm the Rams. Has nothing to do with my organization. I have this no problem. I have no problem with nobody. But I have this big fight left and right. So you're saying who do, who who I side with? I'm going to side with the people who bring me the money. I'm going to side with the fans. So the fans are upset. I have to shift this way. And that's what all of the owners did. Is like, like I'm I'm sitting here like battling. Of course, I want to be on this side, but the narrative. The, the overall, what's the name, is to go this way. So I'm shifting this way. You know, just like but the Trump. The, but the PR and the, and the image from shifting that way is, I, I'm not going to say irreparable, but again, it's just another, it's another chance of just peeling away the level of hypocrisy and the level of bullshit that the NFL spits out and the ownership spits out on a regular basis. I, it's just, you it's have just, to acknowledge that, and that's not going to go away anytime, even, even if he loses this case. I can, no matter what, it's one of those, out of deposition. But that's the one thing, is like, I, I, you, you, I understand both sides. You're just looking at it from a as a business money, as a as a money. business standpoint. You're like, oh, yo, Cap, like, come on, yo, I understand what you're fighting for, but this has nothing to do with me. So when it starts affecting my pocket, I have to do something. Like, I want you here, but you're kneeling. Tells these fans that you don't give a shit. They're gonna stop coming. Now that affects my also, pocket. So also, what do I also, do? Also, your decision as an owner tells your fans you don't give a shit about winning. 
Very, but they're gonna come. But they're gonna keep coming to the stands. So it's like I bring yeah, them you in. Know what? You know what? If you brought in a quarterback that won you football games, I guarantee the stadium will be filled up. It'll anyway. be filled up. But but a, a even quarter, if took a knee. Even but but as I said, but a quarterback that they're they're going against. It's just like Trump right now. Anybody who's associated with Trump, their business dies. Even if I'm best friends with you now, it's like, well, hey, listen, just call me on the cell phone and wait till you get out of politics so we can be friends again. And that's how that is. It's like nobody wants to be associated with it because it's it's the it's that's why I say it's the black eyes. Like they're I mean, fighting a battle that has nothing to do with them. I mean, like, and that's that's where I wish that's one, how I see it. I wish one owner would have the balls to sign it, but I don't think anyone's gonna have. Yeah, and and um, the unfortunate part is in this collusion case, there's two starting caliber players that have not been involved. We have Eric Reed, who's a free agent safety. Nobody has really. I mean, tested. I mean, this guy's a starting caliber safety and has been a starter for for years now. Nobody's looking at him, so he's in a case with Colin Kaepernick. And you said the the collusion case, the people being deposed, they view him as a starting caliber quarterback. Just maybe David Tepper, the new Carolina Panthers owner, with his liberal leanings, can, can in North Carolina. <laughs> I mean, Shit. listen, but I think it, like Nothing. you like you said, name a game. For That's what I said. I just like if you're an owner, if we're all owners, we don't want the spotlight on us. We're already fucked up individuals mm. <laughs> you know, we're already fucked up individuals as owners we don't want that spotlight on us just looking at our our, our, our dirty laundry every single game it's like as i said it's just one of those things that but you understand but you're not looking at it from like a a race or injustice no 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 you're it's looking not at it from a yeah it doesn't say like what what he's doing you know you have to you have to you know applaud him i'm just talking about from a business standpoint yeah. and like why people don't understand why the owner's won't sign him, and I'm saying because what he's standing for, what he's standing for has nothing to do with the NFL. But the NFL, is, those owners are like, well, why am I losing so much money because of... You know what? And that narrative that losing money over this is complete horseshit. Like, like he, will, he will have a better chance if he fought, like, domestic violence and what's the name? Oh, like, we know how that works. You know, but I'm saying is, like, if he fought domestic violence in the NFL and all of that, now that targets the... NFL. Now it's like, well, th- these players are going boom, boom, boom. Now it's like, well, but you, but you applaud Cap for what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, for okay. what he's doing. Yes, right. okay. I mean, he's standing for. I mean, he's standing for something. It's just, you know, as a business, you know, as a yeah. business owner, you got to flip the side and it's like, what, what is the real problem? The real problem is, I'm not, I'm not the police officer. Mm. I haven't killed anybody. So why am I losing hundreds of millions because of this? But like Cap, why is this, uh, why is this new world affecting my world? But like Cap says, if you put him in a game and he's winning you games. Like I said, yeah, I don't know. You're I, making I, money, yeah. You know what I mean? Money. Personally, I don't know, you know, much about his football yeah. career when yeah. it comes to um, is he, he good or not. He should be in the league. He should definitely be in the league. Um, but, fellas, excellent, excellent episode today. Excellent episode. Again, we're all rocking with the Golden State Warriors. They take on the Houston Rockets tonight. We'll see how that turns out. And uh, But considering you're like the psychic of the NBA playoffs, I think we yeah. have a good idea. And yeah. Look, and he was like, yeah, I am. Figured so, inside, Woo, I, I am. Do. I am. But, uh, break down. <laughs> but for Adam Caparrell, Gilbert Arenas, I'm Pierce Simpson. We'll see you tomorrow. This is Out of Bounds. It's just funny how the Rockets have like Highs and lows, right? They can look like world beaters one game. Next game, look like they shouldn't be in playoffs. It's be, it's just their one style of play. Like if they had movement, momentum. Like you see me, yeah. you know, I'm passing the ball. Like oh, we go to say you have Curry pass the ball, come off a down screen. Now, now if he comes off the down screen, this guy helps Curry. Now this guy got an open layup. I mean, you but got like, people touching the other ball. O- other observation: yeah. PJ Tucker should never not wear a suit with no shirt on. <laughs> Performance you said that's what that's what got it. Dead that now. My question is this: So if D'Antoni is so revolutionary to the game of basketball, why does his offense look so simple? But he still puts up a ton of points. It's, it's, it looks simple in this because, okay, if if, if he had it his way, yeah. right? Oh, so you're saying he's not playing? He's not doing his system with this. Is not his system. Okay. This is a little bit of his system, but the ball would be in Chris Paul's hands. They'll be doing pick and roll with him and Capella. Yeah. You know, one diving shooters, you know, yeah. James Harden to be in the corner. So in a true D'Antoni system, Harden and Paul would never really coexist. No, it'd be Harden would have to be like Joe Johnson was. Mm. Huh. So either you're you're like if I'm doing a pick and roll going this way, Capella's setting a pick, he's diving, sucking in this this guy right here. While I'm driving, this guy's floating up, boom. It goes Harden or ISO for Harden here and there, but the ball is in Chris Paul's hand. Now on this in this offense, Chris Paul is a two guy, the mm. two guard who's doing the ISOs. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. Uh, yeah.